Hey folks, Spencer here, and today I want to talk about the new Nidarian Defender. That is going to be the free ship that you're getting from the 2022 Summer Event. For those of you that have participated in the Summer Events before, it's going to be the same thing as usual. Uh, but for those of you that are new to the game and have never been in a Summer Event before... There's going to be a few different events or little mini games you can do on the Summer Ryza map and doing one of the qualifying events daily, which will be listed in the events tab if you want to see which specific ones qualify, uh, will net you a bit of progress towards getting this UFO ship, the Nadarian Defender, completely free to play. So you have to do 20 days worth of events to get this ship for free and you have uh, right around a month to do so so it's going from june 30th to july 30th so you have a bit of leeway if you need to miss a few days here or there if you want to skip the event and just buy it out then it's going to cost you a thousand lobby crystals and uh, spoiler alert I very much do not believe that anyone here should be spending a thousand lobby to get this ship. Just play the daily events and get it free to play. The summer event is extremely easy to do every, every day. It, it takes you just a couple minutes. Do not blow a thousand lobby on this thing. And if you're even thinking about it, close your game and seek some mental help. I, th that's really all I can tell you because a thousand lobby is going to cost you like two hundred dollars worth of keys, and there's no way in hell that this ship is worth two hundred dollars. So, to explain that, we we should probably jump down into the stats. But before I get into the stats, I do just want to specify or get into this nice little detail that this blog has uh, it told us, and that is this ship has a UFO visual appearance, and then. In the shows, it also had a jellyfish visual appearance. Guess what? The jellyfish mode is only there when you activate the console that the ship has. That's right. It's not something you can currently turn on in the tailor. Uh, when you're flying the ship around most of the time, it's just going to be a UFO. You're not going to be able to fly around as a jellyfish. And unless something changes or there's something that they haven't detailed in this blog you're not going to get much use out of the jellyfish skin that this ship has. So let's go back up to the stats now. As with any of these event ships, they're going to have subpar stats to even a sea store ship. Cryptic doesn't give these event ships the most amazing stats because they want there to still be a reason for you to want to go out and purchase a sea store ship. But usually these event ships will end up having like a really good trait or console to to make up for it uh, but in this case as i'll talk about here in a few minutes the, we didn't get that this time now for the ship itself we have a fairly high hull modifier this is a cruiser just to get that out there uh, it's got a 1.45 hull mod uh, but only a 1.0 shield mod this has a 4-4 weapon setup, but it cannot equip dual heavy cannons. So for those of you that were thinking of doing a cannon scatter volley build on this, uh, you're not going to be doing it with dual cannons or dual heavies. The ship's going to excel the most, most likely, with uh, beam array setup with, like, fire at will, I would say. A beam overload could work on this, but it, it, there are better ships for any build that you'd want to put on this. You've got four device slots, and for your bridge officer stations, you have a Lieutenant Commander Tactical, which is good, a Commander Engineer with no specialization seating. That's that's not so good in the, the current state of the game. You've got a Lieutenant Commander Science, that's pretty good, and a Lieutenant Commander Universal with a Miracle Worker. So the ship does have Miracle Worker, but it's only on, on a Lieutenant Commander slot. Now, Miracle Worker, if it's in a Commander slot, would give you an extra console. But because this is only in a Lieutenant Commander seat instead of a Commander, 
you're not getting that extra console from Merrick Worker. So the only thing you're getting out of the Merrick Worker seating here is at best mixed armament synergy and narrow sensor bands. The, the only two Merrick Worker powers anyone ever really uses. Uh, so the bridge officer seating, a little bit underwhelming. It is only four bridge officers for those of you that didn't catch that. But that, that doesn't bother me. Uh, this ship, it's it's obviously not going to break the meta. These event ships usually do not. Uh, but you're going to see a lot of people probably having a bit of a negative reaction to this ship. And the, the bridge officer seating is what really makes a ship good or not. This seating isn't the best in the game. But it's good enough that if you're a free player or you're a returning player and you just want to run a beam array setup with fire at will or beam overload, the ship will do fine. It's not the best, you know, to be clear about it, but it is more than capable of handling any content this game has in it. So long as you spend the time to set up a build on it and get your piloting down and, you know, all the, all the basics like that. For the consoles, three tactical, five engineering, three science. It's got a base turn rate of seven, a bit low. So this thing's gonna turn like a brick. And it has an inertia rating of 30. The lower your inertia rating is, the worse your ship is movement wise, basically. And between the base turn rate of seven and the inertia being at 30, uh, this ship is gonna slide. It's, it's going to slide. If, if you've ever flown one of the bigger cruisers and you've tried to come to a stop after flying at a high speed for a while, you know how there's a bit of inertia making your ship, you know, keep moving for a while. And this ship's going to be pretty bad with that, given the stats that it has. We have all four cruiser commands available to use, if that's something you're interested in. For the mastery package, just a standard cruiser one. You get some resistance, hull regen, more resistance, and max hull capacity. Uh, so the only thing that matters here is the max hull capacity, and the hull regen's cool. Uh, the resistance stuff, if you're a brand new player, you know, and your, your damage output's a bit low, then maybe the resistance matters, but... Uh, the higher end you get into the game, the less resistance matters. It becomes more of a focus on just killing the enemies through brute force before they can even have an opportunity to kill you. Uh, for those of you that want the Admiralty stats, we've got 60 on the Engineer, 33 on Cyan Attack, and the special functionality is plus two all stats from any ship. Now, I don't think many people are doing Admiralty anymore. Uh, but for those of you that have, you know, an Admiralty bot set up or something, which, you know, I think anyone doing Admiralty at this point at a large scale, you got something going on, because how else are you going to stay sane? Uh, you know, if, if that's something you care about, then there you go. Now, before I get into the, the console and all that, I do want to compare to other ships out there. So I've, I've got this lovely spreadsheet. And the way that I have this filter set up is I wanted to look for ships that have a commander engineer and have only four bridge officer seats. So the, the closest ship really to the Nadarian defender is the Undine Kawavi. And the Undine Kawavi just massively beats this Nadarian defender. It's got a full commander command seat on the engineer. Whereas the Nadarian has just an engineer seat with no specialization. The Undine then has a secondary specialization seat, a Lieutenant Commander Universal with Pilot. Now, Pilot's not the most popular, but it is really good on a tanking platform because you can use it, you can use a pilot ability to trigger the cold hearted trait rather than auxiliary to batteries. So, uh, the pilot actually works out really well on the Kawavi, and the Kawavi ended up being a very popular high-end tanking platform for that reason, because command is really good for tanking, and pilot in this specific scenario was actually useful for triggering some starship traits that are really popular on those types of builds. All these ships have a Lieutenant Commander Tack, Lieutenant Commander Psy, 
And really the the pattern here is, you know, all of these basically have two specialization seats. The Gemidar Light Battle Cruiser only has one, but that's because it's got a dual commander setup. And this Nadarian Defender is just sitting here alone. It's it's got a weaker bridge officer setup than any of these other ships that I have listed here. And like I said before, or I think I said before, it, it cannot equip dual heavy cannons, so you can't set up a cannon scatter volley build on it if that was something that you were hoping to do. So let's take a look at the console now. The console is the Nadarian Defense. And when you activate this, it converts you from the UFO into the, the, the jellyfish thing right there. And once you're in your natural state, you will lash out and stun nearby enemy ships while simultaneously healing and protecting nearby allies. You can keep this console active indefinitely, but while it's active, it will severely limit your maneuverability and turn your weapons offline. If you go below like 10% HP, it will just turn off to protect itself. The passives on this console are Starship Hull Restoration and then a all damage resistance rating buff. You know, it can be used on any ship just like any other new console. So the passives are Hull Regen and Damage Resistance. The, so the passives will probably just be largely ignored. The, the toggle turns your weapons off and sets your flight speed and turn rate to three. So your ship is barely going to be able to move while the console's active. But most importantly, your weapons are turned off. This is a game that has everything built around you doing damage to take the enemies out in a certain amount of time. Turning your weapons offline is going to just massively prolong the content that you're doing because eventually you're going to have to come back out of this console and kill the, the opponents. So after the console has been active for five seconds and then each second afterwards, it will heal allies, give them some resistance. And then to all nearby foes, it will do some electrical damage and will have a slight chance to hold them. If you turn the console off, it will have a two minute recharge, but if you want to keep it toggled on, it can last forever. I think this console is a complete joke to, to be blunt about it. Uh, whenever I see something talking about disabling your weapons, that's never a good sign. Okay. Uh, your weapons are extremely important to you to be successful while playing this game. And the fact that this turns your weapons off, I'm going to recommend that, you know, once you get the ship, you take the console off and you just throw it away. That's, uh, that's my recommendation for the Nadarian defense console. Even if you get the ship, even if you like using the ship and you fly it around, you take the console off and you just straight up discard it because you don't even want a chance of having this thing go on your, your tray, unless you really care about having the jellyfish appearance in like a, a social map. That's the only reason to use the console. Do not ever use it in combat, please. It will severely hurt your performance in a queue. And then lastly, we have the starship trait, gelatinous membrane. Activating any whole healing bridge officer ability or any miracle worker bridge officer ability that targets yourself or an ally will grant you a buff of this a buff from the straight for a short duration. This buff will give you plus 80 physical and kinetic damage resistance rating and will cause you to take 25% less physical and kinetic damage before resistance comes into account uh, and reflect that back to an attacker. So, uh, this is a trait basically that gives you resistance and then does a feedback pulse type effect for physical and kinetic damage. And I have to say that this is probably not going to ever be used on any high end builds. 
Uh, this is something that if you're literally brand new to the game and you have no starship traits to slot, then sure, slotting this might help you. But once you get to even a basic budget level, uh, once you're able to get any sea store ships, there's no room for a trait like this on your build. Like, really, a new player can probably take advantage of it uh, until they get better things, but if someone at a high level is using this trait, uh, try and get them some help. That's my recommendation. So, overall, if I'm summarizing this, the, the ship isn't the best thing ever. Um, you know, when you look at this from certain angles, this, this top, uh, let's, let's not get into what that looks like. That's, that's not YouTube safe. The ship itself is capable. It's not the best. No event ship is, but it is good enough. You know, this, this will get you through any content the game has. If you work at it, put a proper build on it to get used to flying it. It's good enough that you can do, you know, whatever you want in the game. Now, the console, completely worthless. Like, this is the most worthless console I have seen in a while. Starship trait. Like I said, a new, <clears throat> a new player might be able to take advantage of it. But if uh, an endgame player or someone that's been around for a while is using this trait... Uh, they're either not very well versed in how to build a ship or they're just trolling would be would be my my impression if someone actually tries to use this at a high level of play but that is going to be it for this video today thank you to everyone for watching and once again a special thanks to all channel members um talking to triz and mc studio a bit recently I'm going to start to try and do some restreams when I when I do my YouTube streams. So basically I'll be streaming on Twitch and YouTube simultaneously. Uh, I'll give that a shot this Saturday, see how it goes. If it goes well, then I'll just keep doing that from from now on. That's going to be it for today. Thanks for stopping by. See you all next time.